What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another review. Um, this is Physics 207 2019 Exam 2. Um, you know, it's a good weekend so far. You know, Alabama lost yesterday, Saturday. They lost yesterday to... I don't know, I forgot the team, but they lost yesterday to, yeah, to Tennessee. So it's been a good weekend. Um, getting ready for this test we have on Wednesday. And this one is kind of interesting, kind of interesting. Lots of new topics, stuff that I'm struggling with still, but I'm going to try to explain it to y'all in teenager terms as much as I can. So if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, like the video, comment down below if this video helped. And if you got any questions, DM me on Instagram. My Instagram's in the description. So you can DM me if you have questions. And also for the people watching me, um, I am not a physics channel because I was in the gym one time and one dude came up to me and said, you're the physics guy, you're the, you're the dude that makes physics videos. And I'm like, I'm not, I don't do physics videos. That's only 1% of my videos. I'm a, I'm a vlogger, public interviewer. This is just 1% of the things I do on my channel. So without getting, without, without uh, getting distracted, without further ado, let's get into 2019 exam two, number one. So number one is gonna pop up on the screen right here. Uh, I'm gonna read it. In the circuit below, all the R's and V's are known. The circuit was put together a long time ago so that it's in a steady state. Obtain a sufficient number of equations that you could solve for all currents. So let me start off by drawing it first. Um, let me just do a quick drawing real quick. So let me put that right there that right there then we got this this G -G 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 -G. there make it long there pa 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 there there this this and then finish it off right there oh, excuse me and then this right there in the middle baba -ba, and that and we have plus negative this is v two, and then we have plus, negative, this is V1, we have R1, R2, R3, R3, R2, R1. And we're just supposed to find the sufficient number of equations. So for this problem, um, we have three steps that we're gonna to need to do for this problem. So the first step we're gonna do that he taught us is to start with naming your direction of currents so we're going to start off with naming the direction of the current on this circuit. So we're, I'm going to take the current starting from the battery as this way, or I'm going to name this I. And this I is going to keep on flowing, flowing, flowing until it gets to this junction right here. It's going to split into another, it's going to split into another current and another current down there. So we're just going to name it. Yeah, let me just make it uh, so similar to what they got. We're gonna name this I1, and then when it gets here, we're gonna name this I3. Yeah, we're gonna name this I3, and when it gets down here, we're gonna name it I2. So now since we're done with that, that's step one. Now step two is to find the direction of the capacitance. There's no capacitors in this question, so we can skip that step. And the third is to indicate your direction of loop. So we're gonna do the direction of loop going clockwise like this, clockwise for both. And we're doing two of them because to find the sufficient number of equations, you take the number of loops and subtract it by one. So we have one loop, two loops, and the big loop. And that's three in total. So we're gonna be doing these two loops right here clockwise direction and after that you can label it number one and this is going to be number two and now since we're done with that we're going to start off with our common rules you have to write down the loop rules and write down your current rules and the junction rule so for the junction rule the rule is the charges at a junction is equal to whatever comes out so over here we see i1 I1 is equal to I2 plus I3, because that is what's going in the junction is equal to what's coming out, I2 and I3. So that's I1, that's the first formula we're gonna need. The second one we're gonna need to write down just to get points 
is electric field is equal to resistance J, if you want to write that down. And then now after that, we wrote the junction formula and we wrote the formula already. Now we're going to get into solving the equations. So we're going to start off with this loop right here, loop number one. Let's write loop number one right here. We're going to write down the formula. So we're going to start off from the battery. I heard this is a good start from the battery. And we're going to keep on going up till around. So from the battery, um, we're going to start off with V1. So it's going from negative to positive, which means it's going to be a positive increase. So and the electric field is negative E dot dr v is equal to negative e dot dr so you have to take the negative of whatever the number is so if it's increasing it's a positive increase so this is going to be negative v1 then after that you're continuing continuing follow 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 and you get to r1 right there you get to r1 right there and we're going to, need to write the formula for that i is equal to v over r and we're writing the we're writing the V's. So V is equal to RI. So once we get right here, you see the current right here is going to be facing this way. And we're also facing that way. So that means the DR, the DR is in the same direction as our loop. So they're both going to be positive. So we're going to get plus R1. And we know the I1, I1, R1. One. Now we continue with the loop, get to the junction, go down again, and we're still going down and we approach R2. The current is going down, so the DR is still downwards and the loop is going downwards clockwise direction. So it's going to be another positive, so it's going to be plus I2, R2, and the law states that it equals zero in a closed loop. So that is for that is for the first one right there and that's for the first one right there and for the second one is going to be the same we're going to do the same rule let's start off from the battery so this one is going from positive to negative so positive to negative means negative increase which means negative decrease which means a positive increase so it's going to be positive v2 going to continue clockwise, 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 you're getting to R2. And you see over here, the current is still going downwards, but you're moving clockwise. So DR would be this direction for this, and that's going negative. So it's going opposite. So this one's going to be negative I2, R2. And then we're going up, up, then we get to I3, I3, keep going clockwise, and I3 is still going this way, still going downwards. So it's going to be positive because it's in the same direction. I3, R3 is equal to zero. And that should be it. That should be all the formulas that you need for this question. Let me double check the answer. This one's correct. And they have this formula right here. And then they have the negative V1 plus I1 R1 plus I2 R2 is equal to zero. So they got all the equations that was needed and that's the correct answer. Now let's move on to number two. Okay, moving on to number two. Um, in the circuit below, R, C's and V's are known. The circuit was put together a long time ago so that it's in a steady state. Obtain a sufficient number of equations that you can use to solve for all the currents and charges on the capacitors find the numerical values of the currents. So I'm not gonna be fun, I'm not gonna do the numerical values because this is a don't panic and we don't do with numbers. So I don't know why that's there, but if you get the equation, you can plug it in if you want to do the math and you're a math nerd. So let's get into it. Um, I'm gonna start off by drawing the thing, the diagram they gave us real quick. Let's go. So now since we're done with that, um, we're going to get started quick. We'll start up around the formulas we're going to need. So we're going to need this formula right here. Change in V is equal to Q over C, which is equal to charge over capacitance. 
we're going to need the e dot dr formula e dot dr is equal to zero and then we're going to need j dot ds is equal to zero and then the final you're going to need v is equal to ir so you should write that in your law portion of the top and now we're going to get started so this one's going to have one two three four loops so we're only going to need three equations for this so we're going to do clockwise just like the last question for all of them clockwise clockwise we're going to follow our steps we're going to find our current direction we're going to make this i we're going to do this i it's going to continue it's going to continue and we're going to be using the same i across all of it because it's going to be there's not going to be any new i's there's not going to be any new i's even though it's a junction so yeah it's going to be the same i and then we're going to go down here i and then, yeah, we're gonna go down here, I, down, I, down, is gonna be the same thing across the whole diagram. So we're gonna label, this is gonna be number one, number two. Actually, we're gonna do number one, number two, and this one's gonna be easier. Our last one is gonna be this whole loop. We're gonna do the big loop. So this is gonna be number three. So let's start off with the formulas. So for number one, we're gonna do the same technique like we did in the last question. We're gonna start off from the battery. We're going clockwise, so it's negative to positive, which means positive increase, so negative V1. Negative V1, we're gonna continue, plus I plus I is gonna be plus I R1. Gonna continue, continue, plus I R4, and that's it for number one. Now for number two, we're gonna go to this loop. We're gonna start off from, there's no battery, so we're gonna start off from here. So we still have the same I is going down. I, R, two, you're gonna have the capacitance. Capacitance is Q, V. Capacitance is Q, V, but we're looking for V, so it's gonna be Q over C. So this is gonna be equal to I, R, two, plus Q, actually wait, there is no resistance. Yeah, that's one thing I forgot to mention. There is no resistance when there's a capacitance. Anything in the same line as the air, as that area is going to be zero. So there's no resistance in this whole line. This whole line, wherever there's a capacitance, there's no resistance because capacitance makes resistance zero. It's just going to be Q1 over C1. Going to continue. Then it's going to be negative I R4. And that should be it, and that's equal to zero. And now for the last one, the big loop, we're gonna go from the battery, negative to positive. It's gonna be negative V1, negative V1, plus I R1, gonna continue down here, plus I R3. Actually, there's no I R3. I R3 is zero, because in the capacitance, it's gonna be plus Q2, over C2, continue down, positive to negative means negative decrease, which means positive V1, positive V2, and then we're gonna continue, we're gonna come back to the loop, and that is all equal to zero. And now if you wanna solve for the equations or whatever, so you know, Q1 all over C1, this is gonna be equal to Q1 is equal to C1 I R four okay and this one if you want to do it uh let me see this one if you want to do it is going to be combine the i's is going to be v1 v1 over r1 plus r4 if you move the v1 to that side combine like terms and divide both sides by r1 plus r4 that's going to be the i this is equal to I, and if you need Q2, Q2 is equal to, move this to the left side, or yeah, move this to the left side, and then just multiply it by that. So it's gonna be C2, V2 minus V1, plus I, R1, plus I, R1, plus I, R1, and that is it for number two. That's all you needed to find. 
They wanted you to find the value for all the currents and the charges. So you got Q1, Q2, and the current. That's it for number two, and let's get into number three. <sighs> now, since we're done with the easy questions, time to get into the hard questions. Pause. Number three, 2019 exam two. <sighs> okay. A spherical shell has inner radius A and outer radius B. It's made of material resistivity with distance or radius, given that. Battery with known voltage V is connected as shown. Find the current, also find the charge contained inside with R is less than ARB. So let me draw what they gave us real quick. So we're gonna draw that, and then a big circle, and then whatever charge, whatever electric field arrow they gave us. So that's basically what they gave us. And then they have a little battery here, plus, and then they have negative, they have a small one, and then they connected it to right there. And this is minus, and that's V. That's V right there, okay, that's V. And we're looking to find the current. So let's write down the formulas we're gonna need. We're gonna need I is equal to V over R. Okay, I don't think this one's showing. Okay, I is equal to V over R. We're gonna need this formula right here. R is equal to resistivity L over A. And those are the main two ones you're gonna need for this one. So let's get started. We're gonna take the derivative of this right here. DR is equal to resistivity DR. L is gonna be DR over A. And A, since this, is a, since this is a spherical shell, A for a spherical shell is just four pi r squared. So now we're gonna integrate this to get the actual r. So r is gonna be equal to A to B, because that is what the radius is, inner radius A and outer radius B. So this right here is A, and this right there is B. So we're calculating it from A to B. So we're gonna do, we're gonna put in the, we're gonna put in the resistivity they gave us, which is this not P, R squared over B squared, R squared over B squared, and then we're gonna have DR over four pi R squared. And that's what we have. And now we're gonna put the, Put the constants on the left side. So this is going to be equal to resistivity not over 4 pi. And the R, uh, let me see. Oh yeah, 4 pi R squared. You're finding the area of the whole shell. So R technically for the for the area is gonna be B. So we're gonna do four pi B squared, replacing the B with R for that R. This R is different from this R, just to let y'all know. So it's gonna be four pi B squared. Then we have A, B. Then we're gonna have DR, DR. And that's the only thing left, because we moved that there. This R squared over B squared. Um, okay, never mind. Um, so for this one, what they did, they removed that R squared, that R squared goes away because it's multiplied technically. So you're just left with the P naught over B squared four pi and then DR is the only thing left. Okay, now this makes more sense. Then you have resistivity naught over the four pi B squared and then DR is just gonna be equal to R. So you're subtracting B minus A. And that's technically what they get for R. And then after you get R, you know the formula right here, you're just gonna do I is equal to V over R, which is all this, this is all R. So we're gonna divide it so we know we can move four pi B squared to the top, four pi B squared to the top. And then all this is gonna be on the bottom, that B minus A. And that is the same thing as the answer they got for pi b minus a. Epsilon, yeah, pi b minus a. And this is the same, I'm using the, I just made it all, I just made it all caps, but it's the same b 
for all of them. B is the same. This B is the same as capital B. So they're not different values. The same 4 pi B, all this B, I just made a capital letter, but it's the same B. Yeah, same B everywhere. So it's 4 pi B squared over resistivity, not B minus A. And that is the I they get. And now for the Q enclosed, that's part A. For the Q enclosed, which is going to be like part B, um, we're going to start with the formula. The flux formula Q enclosed over epsilon naught is equal to EA. That's a formula that you should know. And then that is also equal to resistivity JA. And if you didn't know, J is equal to I over A. So if you combine all that, it's going to be equal to resistivity I over A times A, which is equal to resistivity I. And after that, you combine it with the resistivity they gave you, which is this right here, and you get that not R squared over B squared I. And that is the charge enclosed. That is equal to the Q enclosed. Actually, no, you have to multiply it by epsilon naught. So it's going to be epsilon naught. And that is equal to the Q enclosed, which is the correct answer that they get in the answer key. So this is the formula that you need to remember for this one. Time for the last and hardest question. <sighs> OK. Um, a spherical conducting shell has inner radius A and outer radius B. At a center, a sphere of radius D has a charge of Q uniformly spread throughout. Find a difference in measure potential between a point of center and a point two B from the center. So let's draw what they gave us. Uh, so they gave us this. This has some charge inside. And then they have another circle like that. And then there's another one like that. And this one has some charge right there. And we're trying to find a point 2B. This is 2B right there. And yeah, find a point 2B from the center. And that's it. We're trying to find the electric potential. So let's start with the formulas we're going to need. We're going to need the electric potential formula is equal to negative e dot dr integral, negative integral d dot dr. And then we're going to need the flux formula, e dot ds is equal to q enclosed over epsilon naught. And those are the main two formulas we're going to need. So we're, having, we're going to have to split this into different regions. We're going to find from 2b to the center. We're going to find from this center all the way to over there. So we have 1, 2, three, four parts on there. We're given inner radius A and outer radius B. Okay, so center a sphere of radius D. So we know this inside radius right here, and this right here is D. And then we know this right here is A. You know this right here is A. And we know this right here is B. So let's start off by labeling everything. So now since we have that, we're going to start off with finding the electric potential for each place. So we're going to divide into four sections. This is going to be section 1, section 2, section 3, and outside the radius is going to be 4. So um, for section 1, section 1 is going to be inside the sphere. So this one. This one's gonna, it's gonna require some work. But for section one, um, let's start off with it. It's gonna be, we're gonna start off with uh, E equals Q over four pi epsilon naught. So we're gonna have to find the E outside of that. E outside of that. This one I had to go to a TA to actually get it. So I still don't quite understand it. So I'm just gonna try to do what he did. So E outside of that sphere is gonna be Q over 4 pi epsilon naught q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared and then ir and then after that the charge in a volume is going to be q over 4 over 3 pi r cubed pi r cubed which is equal to q over v and then you're given PV is going to be equal to Q inside 
over 4 all over 3, pi r cubed. And then after that, you got to set them equal to each other. Q over 4 all over 3, pi r cubed is equal to Q inside over 4 all over 3, pi r cubed. And then after that, um, you're going to have to equal them. You're going to try to find Q inside. Q inside is equal to Q over 4 all over 3, pi r cubed times 4 all over 3, pi r cubed, which is equal to Q r 3 over r cubed. And then after that, you're going to do the electric E inside 4 pi r squared is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught and then yeah after you solve that it's gonna be e u n is gonna be equal to q r over four pi epsilon naught d cubed which is the r inside radial direction and then the potential of that is gonna be zero to d q over four pi epsilon naught d cubed epsilon naught d cubed r dr, which is equal to q over 4 pi epsilon naught d cubed r squared over 2, and there's going to be d to 0, and that is q over 4 pi epsilon naught d cubed and then d squared over two, and that's negative because it's the energy. And that's how they get the first part for the first region. I don't understand how to explain that to you, but that's the working for it. But I do understand how to solve the other parts, so that's what I'm going to be explaining. So let's get it, let's do section, let's do the section two, three, and four. Okay, so for section two, for section two, it's when the radius is when D is less than the radius, which is less than A. So we're finding this section, this section to that section. So we know this is radius D and that's radius A. And there's a charge inside this and that charge is Q. So we're gonna start off with the flux formula. We're gonna do E DS is equal to one over epsilon naught Q enclosed. Okay, now we're gonna move on. Um, so we know the this is a, a spherical shell. So it's gonna be E times the area is gonna be four pi r squared is equal to one over epsilon naught, and the Q enclosed is just Q. So after we're given that, we're gonna solve for E, and now we know E is equal to one over four pi epsilon naught, one over r squared, and this is gonna be q, q over, yeah, q over four pi epsilon naught, one over r squared, and after that, we're gonna to to take the integral, it's gonna be negative q over four pi epsilon naught, and then one over r squared dr, which is equal to Q over four pi epsilon naught, and then one over R, whatever the bounds are, and the bounds for this is from A to D. So after that, the answer is gonna be Q over four pi epsilon naught, one over D minus one over A. And that is it, or one over A minus one over D. It's from A to D, right? Oh, no, no, it's from D to A. Oh, okay, that's why. Okay, it's from D to A, I forgot. D is the smaller one, A is the bigger one. D is the smaller one, A is the bigger one. So it's from D to A, so it's gonna be one over A minus one over D. One over A minus one over D. And that is it for section two, which is what they got also. So um, that's for section two. Now we're gonna move on to section three. Section three, um, since this is, you see how it's marked like that, 
section three is just gonna be equal to zero. So this one is gonna be equal to zero because there's no charge in that area. It is, what's the thing they gave us? It is a spherical conducting shell. So that part where, that part has no charge inside. So now we're trying to find the charge at the outside. The charge at the outside is gonna be the same. We're gonna use the same formula right here. So the charge at the outside for part four, which is the 2B to B, is just gonna be Q over four pi epsilon naught one over R, and then it's from B to 2B. So this one's just gonna be equal to Q over four pi epsilon naught one over two B minus one over B. And that is the same thing. And that is the final answer for number four. One over two B one minus one over B. Yeah, using the same thing because it's the same sphere. So you apply that to that and you just combine all of these electric fields and that's how you get the final answer that they get in the answer key. Um, that's it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna be doing 2018 right after this. So if you wanna watch 2018 version, um, go ahead. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like on the video, send this video to your friends, and I'll see you guys in my next video.